biggest race day. We're 30 minutes from green at Indy, five and a half hours from green at Charlotte. Will the winner's circle be splashed with the colors of a nighttime rainbow? At Indy, it's a Penske-less battle. Will the Menards be able to hold up for 500 miles? And we'll show you how a guy named Little was the biggest one of all in a crash fest Saturday at Charlotte. All on race day for Memorial Day Sunday, 1995. Oh, good morning. Welcome to Race Day. I'm Rick Benjamin. If your pulse isn't racing yet this morning, stick with us this next half hour and you'll certainly be in high gear. The start at Indy is minutes away. There was concern about the weather up until this morning, but skies have cleared at Indianapolis. Now we'll have a full preview of the 500 coming up. But we start today in Charlotte, where the Coca-Cola 600 goes green in a couple of hours. And the biggest question of all, can anyone stay with the kid? Jeff Gordon, the defending champ of the 600. He dusted everyone last Saturday night in the Winston Select here on TNN, and he's almost two miles an hour faster than the rest of the field today. Let's go live to Charlotte Motor Speedway, welcoming Dr. Dick Bergman to race day. Dick, what do you think? Can anyone stay with this guy? If we were in Vegas, you couldn't even get a bet down on Jeff Gordon today, I bet. Well, that's what they're wondering this morning at the garage area, Rick. The mood here is of quiet anticipation, and everybody is thinking about and talking about Jeff Gordon, and they are thinking about and talking about the weather. The skies are leaden, gray, and overcast. We have had rain here today. Rain is in the forecast. The crews are working on the cars. None are working on their car any harder than this bunch. The crew working on Darrell Waltrip's car actually has to prepare this vehicle for two different drivers. Waltrip, hurt last Saturday night in the running of the Winston Select, will turn over the controls of that car to Jimmy Hensley as soon as he possibly can. Waltrip definitely still suffering from that accident. But Jeff Gordon is the man on everybody's mind, and no wonder he has only run four Winston Cup point races here at Charlotte. He has a first, a second, a fifth. He's tried to qualify only five times. He's got three poles in all of that. Last Saturday night, he won the Winston Select with this car, and Ray Evernham says they're going today with exactly the same setup that was so fast last Saturday night. The question in the garage, can anyone even keep up with Jeff Gordon? Oh, Dick, uh, Gordon's success has come a lot at night, after dark. Do they have something special about that car that works better when the sun goes down? What they've really got here, Rick, is everything together. And that's what it takes to go fast at Charlotte or any other racetrack. There's no one single element that works here. They've got a terrific crew chief who understands the car. They've got great communication. One of the best drivers, most courageous drivers on the circuit. A car that lacks for nothing and great horsepower. All right, we'll be back to check more with you about the technical wrinkles we're seeing this week at the Charlotte Motor Speedway a little bit later on race day. Dick Bergeron there for us live today. Well, after an unusually tense month-long build-up, the 79th Indy 500 is finally here. This is the 50th year that the Hallman family has operated the big speedway. It's been a month of huge stories and subplots, and the biggest one of all, for the first time in 26 years, no car in the field for the captain. The racing world looked on in disbelief. Team Penske tried nine different cars, three different brands to try to qualify. Even Al Sr. had to shake his head. They waved off a run for Emerson Fittipaldi last Saturday that would have put him solidly in the show, sending waves of frustration through the team. For Al Unser Jr., failing to qualify a personal blow. 1961, the last time the 500 went green without an Unser in the field. No defending winner in the race either for a long, long time. You know, when I won the first year, it, it, it's hard to put into words and... and uh... And now it's really hard to put into words what, uh, what missing the show is about. Well, the focus today on the 33 who did make the show. It's the fastest and the least experienced field in 500 history. In a month with only four on-track incidents, many are asking, is all this a prescription for disaster? Brian Hurta found out it was. That question and many more will be answered on the racetrack in the next three and a half hours. Among the other questions, how will the eight cars wearing Firestone tires led by third fastest qualifier Scott Goodyear make out in race conditions? Now on Wednesday, Goodyear, the tire company, announced they've got a new sticky tire available for the show today. This compound tested a couple of miles an hour faster over the winter. Now all cars must start on the tires they qualified on, so look for at least some Goodyear teams to make the change on their first pit stops. And what about the Menards? Will the V6 engine, the old Buicks, last the full 500 miles? They were fast early and in qualifying, but now mechanical gremlins have kept them silent for two weeks. And how will the high number of part-time drivers do today? Ten of this year's field of 33 will run only at the Brickyard this year. Including the entire front row, will we see a repeat winner? Three former champs, including this guy, Ari Leyendijk, will take the green. The 90 winner starts in the middle of row one. 85 winner Danny Sullivan goes 18th. Bobby Rahal, the winner in 86, will start 21st. 
What of Michael Andretti as he quietly poised to end the family's 26-year-old jinx at the big speedway? Some answers to those questions coming up in less than 30 minutes when the fastest field ever in 500 history takes the green flag. And we'll have all the highlights for you tonight on the PM edition of Race, with Race Day coming up here at 7.30 Eastern on TNN. A rarity at the big track, much of the attention going to a team that's not in the show today. The Penske team has dominated for three decades and they were shut out as we showed you here on Race Day last weekend. Well, what's next for Team Penske? How about a comeback IndyCar title? Some on this normally tight-lived team have had a lot to say about their driver's alleged unwillingness to test before Indy. Race Day has learned that Penske met with his two drivers, Al Jr. and M.O., for two hours yesterday privately, trying to sort out the inter-team dissension and get the drivers focused on the task of coming back to win the IndyCar title. Roger Penske told our Jerry Garrett yesterday the meeting was key to salvaging their season. Penske feels he was able to get inter-team problems sorted out. We'll find out next Sunday when they go to the short oval at Milwaukee. One major factor of this huge day of motorsports is the weather. A lot of concern in India about the chance for rain before today. And we've got a little weather map to show you here. Uh, my days as a meteorologist long behind me, but as you can see in the, in the heartland of the country there, things have cleared up now in Indiana. The 500 should be okay for its noontime start. Here in Charlotte, if you can look at the southeastern U.S., a, a little bit of a different story. There's a storm system over the Carolinas. These uh, radar images from a couple of hours ago. Everyone hoping that the skies will clear up. The 600 due to go green at uh, 5 o'clock this afternoon, and you'll see that race uh, as well, and of course, uh, highlights coming up next week on Race Day. Much more on our Memorial Day edition of Race Day. We'll recap yesterday's BGN show at Charlotte, and the super trucks were rained out in Missouri yesterday at I-70. They'll try again today on TNN. A live preview is coming up next. Race Day is brought to you by Mopar. Chrysler Corporation Parts and the Chrysler Plymouth Dodge, Dodge Truck, Jeep, and Eagle dealers who sell and install them. By Jiffy Lube. If it doesn't say Jiffy Lube, it just isn't Jiffy Lube. By Speed Stick, by Menon. Like you, it never quits. Welcome back. If you tuned in here yesterday to TNN to see the NASCAR Super Trucks at I-70 Speedway, Mother Nature didn't cooperate. It's been raining a lot in the Midwest, and that's causing havoc for promoters, teams, and television crews, too. Our TNN broadcaster standing by in Odessa, Missouri. They'll give it another try at 3 o'clock this, e this afternoon, Eastern Time, running the Western Auto 200 today. Ralph Shaheen is there for us. Ralph, how does the weather look at this point? It looks kind of cold out there. It is, Rick. In fact, it's not exactly Department of Tourism Day here at I-70. We've got some gray skies with some threatening conditions for rain. Our biggest problem is on the back stretch. You'll see there's a crossover gate, and just in front of it, there's a whole bunch of speedy drive. We've had a lot of seepage of water coming through that back section of the racetrack, which has made things very difficult. Some of the local modifies going around very timidly right now. Ron Hornaday joins me, the current point leader. How tough is that going to be for you today? It's pretty tough. Uh, we got to get some rubber down first right now. We tried to go out there. We couldn't get enough rubber down with the super truck, so uh, we got the modifieds out there trying to dry the track up right now. Let me ask you this. We're also hearing word out of NASCAR that the 9-to-1 motors will not be used in Winston Cup next year. How much will that affect your program since a lot of teams are looking at this as an R&D situation? Well, I really don't know. You know, the first time I've heard of it, too. But, uh, no, we're going to keep on going and doing the tests as we got to do because someday NASCAR will go to the 9-to-1s in the Winston Cup. So we just keep on doing what we got to do for this Papa John Chevrolet. Well, Rick, right now we're hoping they can get the track dry. They had a dread dryer loan from Heartland Park in Topeka. That helped out quite a bit. We'll just have to wait and see at race time. All right, we hope things go well. That point battle between uh, Mr. Hornaday and uh, his uh, Richard Childress's driver, Mike Skinner, pretty close at this point. It is a real tight points battle. Butch Miller stuck right in the middle of this whole thing. Corner Day and, and Skinner are really going to have a tough time beating Butch Miller. This is a great track for Butch. He's had a lot of success here in ASA. We'll be live from Idessa a little later on today right here on All TNN. Right. Thanks, Ralph. Look forward to your broadcast. He'll be back at 3 o'clock Eastern time. The Western Auto 200 for the Super Trucks right here on TNN this afternoon. And one event that made it in despite the weather yesterday, the prelude to today's 600 at Charlotte, the Red Dog 300 for the Bush Grand National Cars. The drivers facing their longest test since Atlanta back in March, their third 300-miler of the year. Race Day's Matt Yoakum was at the Speedway. The 300-mile length event meant survival skills were as important as speed. Eight cautions flew during the race, eliminating 10 cars and damaging many others. The biggest involved points leader Johnny Benson. Tim Benner tagged Benson on the front straight. They collected Kenny Wallace, Rodney Combs, and Dennis Setzer. No injuries, just lots of bent metal. Others visiting the body shop on Monday will be defending series champ David Green, Hermes Sadler in the DeWalt car, and Mike Wallace, who got bumped by eventual contender Jeff Purvis. 
Those not crashing were fighting for the lead as nine drivers swapped the top spot 17 times. Surprise pole sitter Rich Bickle provided drama coming back from a lap down to lead 41 laps, only to run out of race car. This day was reserved for one of the Bush Series' toughest survivors, Chad Little. The Bayer Ford pilot suffered injuries in this event last year that cost him a shot at the title, so it was payback time. Little started seventh, led when he could, and hung out with the leaders all day. When Jeff Purvis was forced to make a gas-and-go stop late in the race, Little seized the moment and held off the late-race challenge of Jeff Green to pick up his fourth win of the year. I can't believe I won Charlotte, you know what I mean? Daytona then Charlotte, this is for the team and for everybody involved, and uh, I'm, just, I'm just tickled to death. Tracy Leslie came home third with Winston Cupper's Mark Martin and Kenny Schrader rounding out the top five. Bickle fought all day to end up eighth. Taking a look at the Speed Stick Fast Track Points update brought to you by Menon, Benson's misfortune and Little's win cuts Benson's lead to 124 points over Chad Little. The tour rolls into Dover next Saturday. Catch all the action right here on TNN. Reporting for Race Day, I'm Matt Yoakum. All right, thanks, Matt. Next up is Matt Betcher, the new cement at the Monster Mile in Dover. And again, you'll see that and the Winston Cup race Sunday live here on TNN. Big day yesterday for Rich Bickle, too. He turned out a great ride. Well, another huge event, traditional on this Memorial Day weekend, the Formula One Circus in the Principality of Monaco without former world champion Nigel Manziel aboard. Our Nigel always has had a gift for the dramatic, and his departure this week was no different. He was canned by McLaren after poor performances in Imola and in Spain, and all this after McLaren spent more than a million dollars to build him a special wider car Dubbed the B version for Big Boy. Now on the track this morning, they're still running in Monaco. Five laps remaining, and the leader continues to be Michael Schumacher. He's led virtually from the start. Bad crash right off the green flag. Next up for Formula One, the Grand Prix of Canada and Montreal. That's coming up in two weeks. And there is more to come. They're counting down toward today's 5 o'clock start uh, of the Coca-Cola 600 at Charlotte. We'll go back there in just a couple of moments on race day. Stay with us. NASCAR Super Truck by Craftsman Series. Great racing action. New faces in the winner's circle. Lots of unpredictable contact. They've never tackled the high banks until today. I'm Mike Joy. Join Glenn Jarrett, Ralph Shaheen, and me for TNN's exclusive live coverage from the 34-degree bank I-70 Speedway in Odessa, Missouri. It's the Western Auto 200, live today at 3 p.m. Eastern. And we're back, and now our Mopar performance update. Counting down toward the start of the Coca-Cola 600 at Charlotte Motor Speedway. If the weather cooperates, let's go live back to the garage area with the editor of Stock Car Racing Magazine, Dr. Dick Bergren. Dick, great to have you with us again today. You always keep a close eye on things technical in our sport. Who's come up with new wrinkles today that might take them to victory lane tonight? Well, there are a couple of technical stories down in the garage area this morning, Rick. One of them is tires. It seems as if tires are always a story. This year, Goodyear is alone in Winston Cup racing. They have built what they thought was going to be a more conservative tire as a result. I guess the drivers didn't know about that. Six of them broke the track record with this more conservative tire. The other story, NASCAR trying to level the playing field between the Pontiacs, the Fords, and the Chevrolets. They gave Pontiac the biggest back spoiler of all, a quarter inch taller than the Ford half an inch taller than the Chevrolet. The Pontiac has a nose that's a quarter inch closer to the racetrack than anybody else. Guess what? The drivers all say, we need a little bit more in our particular brand. And in the top five, we've got a Ford, we got a Pontiac, we've got three Chevrolets. This will be decided between the drivers, not the cars. We'll look forward to seeing how it plays out later this afternoon. Thanks, Dick. We'll be back with you one more time in just a couple of moments. Out West, after winning the Winston West title last season, Mike Chase got a shot at the big time. He was hired to run the active motorsports Chevrolet, the 32 car on the Winston Cup Trail, but it only lasted one race. Chase was sacked, you may remember, after failing to qualify at Daytona. It put Mike Chase's career into a tailspin, but things are now looking up for the defending Winston West champion. Jerry Garrett has our story. This is a story of redemption, played out against the backdrop of last weekend's Winston West race at Denver. Battling for the lead are number 12, Dan Obrist, 64, Garrett Evans, and number 77, Mike Chase, last year's series champion. Chase thought he'd graduated to the big time this season with a Winston Cup ride, but he was fired after only two races. He's been trying to put his life and his career back together since then. Chase's big break came recently when Steve Sellers, and also ran as a driver, decided to step aside and become a car owner for Chase. Chase repaid the favor by holding off 95 points leader Doug George for the victory. 
All I can do is thank, thank Steve Sellers and SMM Motorsports. You know, these guys have worked their tails off to be here. You know, we, they, I told Steve we needed a better motor. They went and got a Yates motor. You know, we're here. The Goodyear tires did what we needed to do. And, you know, old Milwaukee come aboard for this race. And never can tell. It might be better from now on out. From Denver for race day, this is Jerry Garrett. And yeah, we wish Mike well, hope he continues to have a strong year. As we've documented, this has been a tough week for Roger Penske on the track, but on the business front, things looking up. Penske announcing Wednesday he's bought into the Charlotte Motor, or rather the North Carolina Motor Speedway. Let's get the correct track here. North Carolina Motor Speedway in Rockingham. Penske already owns Michigan and Nazareth, and they're building the new California Speedway. Roger purchasing a minority interest of the rock and undisclosed percentage. He joins Bruton Smith as a minority owner, which ought to make for some interesting board meetings. And the lightning-fast Salem Speedway, silent at least for now in Indiana. The IRS seizing control of the racetrack from the Gettlefinger Trucking Company this week. The trucking company also closed. They're reportedly $125,000 behind on their taxes. We're told there are several suitors who want to take over Salem, including ASA President Rex Robbins, the Hooters restaurant chain, Group 5 Sales of Charlotte, which handles ASA's TV package, an Indiana car dealer and racer, Ray Skillman. Now, three of that group might be making news of their own. Race Day has learned that Hooters has, till the end of this calendar year, to exercise an option to buy a controlling interest in the ASA. And finally, the NASCAR family lost one of its pioneers this week, Enoch Staley, the owner of the uh, North Carolina Motor Speedway, rather, I'm sorry, the North Wilkesboro Speedway, passed away last weekend. Staley helped found the Wilkes County Short Track back in 1947. During his long career, Enoch Staley was a supporter and business partner in several tracks with Bill France Sr. Enoch Staley will be fondly remembered. Uh, if there was a word for Enix Daly, it was integrity. When he looked at you, he said exactly what he meant, never raised his voice much, but you could always tell exactly where he stood. And it was one of the reasons that racing grew, was because there were promoters like that that worked for the France family to build this sport. And uh, there's a lot of new promoters and a lot of new organizers and a lot of new things about the sport. but. It was because of the strong character of men like Enoch Staley that this thing got off so very, very nicely. We're going to miss him. Enoch Staley, a NASCAR pioneer, will be missed and will be back. Welcome back to our Memorial Day edition of Race Day. Let's catch you up on some late news from several days ago on two wheels. Round two of the Formula USA series at Road Atlanta a few days ago. Fans treated to two heats in the new Run What You Brung format. We're going to show you some highlights. Dave Sadowski really dominated the day on board his number one Honda, Mike Velasco tuned bike. He was the band to beat, overcoming slippery conditions, slicing his way to the front in race one, dominating the last half of the first battle to the checkers. In the second race, Sadowski made it look easy again, grabbing the lead early, never looking back. I feel great. That was probably one of the, another great race. Um, Michael and Ski were both just pushing so hard. And I got in front of Michael and he got back by me and I was I was making a pass at him, but they were just they were both going hard. I was, did all I could do. And it was plenty. Dave Sadowski, the Formula USA bike winner at Road Atlanta. We're not done yet on this morning edition of Race Day. Counting down to the Coca-Cola 600 for the Winston Cup stars at Charlotte a little later this afternoon. You know who the fastest is on the track. We'll show you who the fastest was over the wall, sort of, when we come back on Race Day. Welcome back to Race Day. A busy week in Charlotte with tons of festivities building up to today's Coca-Cola 600. Last night in the Queen City, fans packed downtown Charlotte for Speed Street. Plenty for the fans, including the AC Delco Pit Stop Challenge. A chance for fans to see what it's like to leap the wall, change some tires, and handle a fuel can. Well, the fastest time posted by the team of Bobby Kosky, Jim Rowland, Bobby Jawinski, David Borders, and Thomas Alexander. This amateur crew of Over the Wallers changed two tires and dumped in some fuel in 12.96 seconds. It was worth a check for $1,000 with their great effort over the wall in downtown Charlotte yesterday afternoon. Uh, psyched them up as best I could. I guess a thousand dollars incentive might have helped a little too, huh? Yeah, and that's the fact they want some Winston Cup teams to see their performance. Looking to volunteer perhaps for today's 600 Borders and his teammates get our congratulations. Before we close, wanted to head out to Charlotte Motor Speedway live one more time. Dr. Dick Bergman is there for us today. Dick, who do you think has the winning combination when we get going at about five o'clock this afternoon? Well, I hope the weatherman has the winning yeah. combination this afternoon, Rick. We are really worried about weather right now. There's a little bit of mist in the air. And right now, mechanics have fired the engine on the car. Well, they've just shut it off now. They have, they have been running the engine in the car that most of the teams here figure has got a very good shot, the best shot to win this race. But to win the race, he has got to finish this race at 600 miles. This is the longest stock car race anywhere in the world. And about half to a quarter of the cars that start it 
won't be around at the end. Last points race here, Jeff Gordon was very, very strong. Unfortunately, he was one of those cars that wasn't around in the end. Crashed out toward the end of the race. Now, the winner last fall was the car that starts on the outside pole this year with a different driver. Yeah, and that's an interesting combination. Labonte has run so well in 1995, Rick. He's got two second-place finishes so far. They say around this division, all you have to do is run up front, and eventually you're going to win. Labonte is certainly ready to do just that, and a lot of people are picking him. All right, we'll see how it plays out later. See you out at the track in a short time. Dr. Dick Bergman okay. for us today at Charlotte Motor Speedway. We're about out of time on race day this morning. The Indy 500 about to go green. The Coke 600 at 5 o'clock today. I'll be busy out of the Speedway, so Mike Hogwood will be here for the PM edition of race day tonight at 7.30. A couple of other notes. Our win with the driver sweepstakes here on TNN will announce our winner for next week's trip to Dover Downs. That'll be tonight at 7.30, so you won't want to miss that. A special race day tip of the hat today to Ageless Bentley Warren, the New England Open Wheel Maestro. Double dipped. He won the Super Modified Show at IRP the other night. He won the Little 500 for Sprint Cars last night at Anderson, Indiana. We'll have some highlights of that tonight. Michael Schumacher has won the Formula One race at Monaco, led almost all the way. We'll have some uh, more information on that for you tonight as well. I'll see you next Sunday. Remember, this is Memorial Day weekend. Remember the meaning. Have a fast day. See you on race day. Race Day.